Hey there, welcome to Cheaper Jeeper TV, the show that helps you get the most for your money so that you can get the most for your Jeep. In last week's episode, we saw the exclusive Cheaper Jeeper TV roof wing awning. It's a DIY project that in this week's episode, we're going to learn how to build and at the end we're going to talk about how much it costs or how little it costs. You be the judge. Here you go. Give me a hand. Hey, thank you for coming. We are going to build the Cheaper Jeeper TV exclusive roof wing awning. Let's get started. Okay, so what we have here are all the parts we need to make the system. We've got the ABS pipe, we've got our tarp, we've got the end caps, we've got the tube in the middle that the tarp's gonna wrap around, and then a bunch of fasteners. Now, to make the video go a little quicker, I'm going to put a link in the video description which will take you to the website where there will be drawings and a complete itemized list and a set of instructions in writing for anybody who's interested. Okay, what we have here are some tools that you can use when you need to cut the ABS pipe. You can use a regular hand saw, a reciprocating saw, a jigsaw, and of course, make sure you wear some safety goggles so you don't get hurt. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is get a length of the 4 inch ABS pipe that's 84 inches long. Measure 7 feet all the way around the ABS pipe and to mark the edge of that line more clearly, you can use some tape. This will help you make a square cut as possible. So now we have our 7 foot length and we're going to mark in 3 inches from both ends before we cut the hole. To cut the hole and have it as square as possible and make sure that those two corners are square with those two corners, I'm going to try snapping the line. There may be other ways to do it, but this is how I'm going to do it. Okay, that worked. So essentially, three inches in and on that line will be one of the corners. And three inches in on this line is the other corner. The opening for the hole is going to be approximately 4 inches, but it's difficult to be accurate when you're measuring with a tape measure on the curve. That's why I'm going to use the tape. So this mark marks the other corner of the hole. So now I'm going to take this tape and transfer it to the mark on the other side so that I mark the other hole location as accurately as possible. So now that I've got the markings for the four corners on either side of the pipe, I now have to get down to the job of cutting that opening. You can see on the masking tape the marks, and I chose to snap another chalk line down that side. Before I actually make the cuts, I'm going to go over the lines with a pencil in case the chalk gets rubbed off, the pencil line I'm sure will still remain. And then, in order to make the cuts, I'm going to use probably around a quarter inch drill bit to put a hole in the corners on one side where I'll hide it with hinges and then about two feet in from the other side I'll put a hole where I'll have the last covering and I'll make my cuts from those holes so that they'll be covered and everywhere else on the opening it'll just be a straight line for the cut. That's where one hole will be. This is where another hole will be. The clasp will be on this side, about two feet in from the corner, and two feet in from the corner on this side as well. And from those holes, I'll begin to make all the cuts. I'll just check to see that the blade fits. Lots of room, okay? And now the holes on the other side, that'll be hidden by the clasps. Now I'll use the jigsaw to make the cuts. It might be possible to come up with a jig to help make sure that the cuts are perfectly straight, but I'm just going to do it by hand, and I know it's not going to be perfect, but you do your best. Okay, that's a... Uh, pretty messy job. I'll we'll have to Google how to do that better next time. <laughs> but anyway, once you're done that, you want to smooth up the surfaces using a hand file. Okay, what you see here is the result of a little bit of filing and some sanding and a little bit of elbow grease. 
and you can see that the edges aren't perfect but they're smoothed off and we'll move on to the next stage of the process now. Okay, the next stage of the process is to put the fasteners in on the ends of the 4-inch ABS pipe that will support the middle bar. Essentially, I'm going to take these eye bolts and secure them in the 4-inch ABS pipe so that they overlap and that way the two ends will cradle the pipe. Here's a mock-up of what I'm talking about so you can see the eye bolt secured inside there and the half-inch pipe just works like that. Okay, let's get to it. I put a piece of tape here and I marked from this corner over to the edge of the tape that location and then I did the same here from this corner I came to this side of the tape and marked that location and that's where I'll put in the holes for the two bolts. Now you might wonder why I don't offset the two bolts so that the eyes overlap. Um, I, I'm gonna have them putting a little bit of pressure against each other that'll help them hold in place but if you want to do the offset you can do that. And then I've already put the tape here at the other end and put in the markings so now it's just time to dr drill the holes and I'm going to start with a small pilot hole. Now 5 16 hole. Okay, the other side. Okay, now we're ready to install the eye bolts. Okay, so here's the eye bolt and I have a nut, a lock washer, and a washer. And then I just install it through the hole. And then on the outside I got one of these nylock nuts that uh, do a good job at locking in place without the use of a lock washer and that gives it a cleaner look on the outside here. I'll adjust that for fit in a second. But there you can see from the outside just one clean little nut on the outside and the eye bolt on the inside. And I'll just do the second one now. We've got the nut, the lock washer and the washer. I want to get those lined up a bit and I'll adjust them. They line up pretty good. I'm just going to adjust the bolts now just to make sure they're nice and tight on both sides. Looks pretty nice. Now the other side. Nut, lock washer, washer, and then on the outside, a nylock nut. Okay, there you go. We got them in both sides. Okay, this is pretty exciting so far because got our brackets in place to hold the middle pipe. The next step is determining how long that middle pipe has to be and it depends on what type of end caps you use. We're going to still keep the front of the tube with a screw-on cap, but we're just going to seal the back with just a straight cap. I was going to have an angle on the back and a spout on the back. I'm still going to have a spout at the back on this flat cap, but this just fits the Jeep better and it works out to be cheaper. At this end of the pipe, it's in contact with the end of the cap. At this point, I just need the pipe to go through these fasteners so I can cut it at length here, 89 inches. Okay, to cut the pipe, there's more than one way to do it. You can use a hacksaw if you have one handy, or if you have one of these plumber type tools where it's a little clamp and a cutting wheel, and you put it around the pipe and you turn the dial, and then with every turn around the pipe, you turn the dial again to tighten the blade, and then just keep going around and around until it cuts the pipe. You can see it's not going to go anywhere in that direction and the pipe right here it seems like it's sticking out but the bottom of the cap is has a little cavity and that pipe will rest nicely in that cavity and there you go you've got the pipe inside the ABS tube it's not going to move anywhere it rotates supported on those eye bolts and the next question is how do we turn that well, I don't have welding skills, and I imagine a few of you don't as well, so I wanted to come up with something that we all could use. So here's what I've come up with. So here's how the crank mechanism works. The galvanized inner pipe sticks out a little bit beyond the end because it rests within the cavity in this cap. So by it sticking out, that allows me to put one of these angles and a small piece right here and another angle and finally another piece and it's, in essence it makes a handle and it, you can put a decorative cap on it if you like as well. So there you go. You've got a working handle that you put together with a few screws. Pretty nice. And when you're done, you 
just loosen this screw. Anyway, there's my DIY crank handle for the awning. Okay, now one part of the design that you have to worry about. When this cap is on and the end cap is on, that holds the interior bar in place. But when you take this cap off and attach the handle, there's nothing that's keeping the bar from coming out this way. So what we're going to do is install a cotter pin and a washer on this side of the hanger to keep that from happening. And now what we want to do is install the cap and the hinge so we can close up the tube. The problem that I encountered at this stage is with this opening cut out of the tube, it changed shape in that the middle part of the tube had collapsed a little bit in on itself. You can't see it by eye, but when you try to match the cut piece to the hole, it wouldn't fit. So I had to spend some time with the saw and the file to reshape the cap piece so that it would fit the opening. Now, probably from far away, this might not look too bad, but it, it, it is not pretty. <laughs> okay, so now let's put on our hinges. What I picked up are these piano hinges. And they're the same price as small hinges, so I thought, well, that might provide a little extra support along the edge where I plan to bolt them on. So let's have a look at how I'm going to fasten the hinge to the tube. So the type of fastener I'm going to use for the hinge is a bolt that has a round head and I'll have the bolt head on the inside of the tube and on the outside the nut I plan to use is another nylock to make sure that it doesn't come undone. So the first thing that I'm going to do is tape the top cap in place So now that I've got the hinges taped down, I'm going to start by putting small pilot holes through and then I'll use a drill bit that's sized closest to the bolt so I can easily feed it through. Okay, now that the pilot holes are done, I can remove these hinges and be able to work on making the right size holes to fit the bolts. Okay, so the holes are drilled. We're going to try now to feed the bolts to come up the holes on the side and then we'll attach the hinge to them. Okay, so I installed the round headed bolts through the holes up to the outside of the tube and installed a nylock nut. Now I've got one of these fancy type of screwdrivers that allows me to hold the bolt in place from the inside while I ratchet the nylock nut in place. Now I did try to get half inch bolts, but they didn't have them, so these are a little long. I may just grind the long part off when I'm done here. So that looks pretty good, now I'll just put on the other one. Okay, so we've got this side of the hinge attached, now we just have to attach it to the cap. Okay. Pilot holes were drilled and the hinge was installed on the one side, but uh, what you need to do when you do the pilot holes on the cap piece is offset the pilot hole by one hole, otherwise when you open the cap the two bolt heads will hit each other. Ask me how I know. Okay, we now have the hinge attached and the flap closes not bad. Um, it opens up pretty good, but like I said, I'm going to grind off these bolts now because they didn't have the short length I needed. I had to get the longer length, so let's grind these off. So you can technically cut those off with a hacksaw, but I have to have a grinder and that's going to be quicker. Okay, I just finished grinding down those bolts. If you had half inch bolts, you wouldn't need to do that, but they only had three quarters at the store, so I chose to grind those extra lengths off. Now I can just open up the cap like this. And the next step is to put latches on here, but I ran out of bolts, so I'm gonna come back to do this, but I'm gonna carry on the build process. So as an additional piece to this project, 
is the desire to have a water spout in the tube in case you wanted to store water in it when you're camping. I wouldn't advise at all that you drink this water that's stored in the ABS pipe, but it should be good enough to use to wash things and then you can need your source of potable water just for your drinking. So basically, the back of the tube will have this cap which will be sealed and glued to the tube and the spout will be located at the bottom. But a thing to consider is that the fastening part that's going to be inside the pipe will be located just along the bottom of the pipe like that. So where that locates on this cap is a critical point. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to assemble this together and then hold the inside piece against the cap and try to mark the center with a drill bit. So I'm going to be using this socket to tighten it, so I'll use that to make sure I can fit on that side of the pipe. So that's the location of the inside piece, and I'm going to mark the center. And I'm going to use a three quarter inch drill bit to drill out the hole for this attachment piece to fit into the back of the spout. So the interior piece has an o-ring and I put silicone for a washer on the faucet and I'll just join these pieces together now. Well the next time I looked up it looked like I was out of battery so I put a new battery in the camera. So I don't know where we left off but now I've got the spout sealed with silicone and an o-ring and the next step and final step is to just glue the end caps on to the tube. Okay, until I get bolts to put those latches on, I'll hold the cap on with these bungee cords. And we're at the final stage of the process here, where I'm going to glue on the cap pieces. So one of the first things you should do is sand the surfaces that you're going to be gluing together. Apply the glue to both of the mating surfaces, then gently rotate them together. As you apply the pieces together, gently rotate them into position. We'll let that piece harden for now, and we'll go put on that piece. As you apply it, gently rotate it into position. Finally, the last piece. As you slide the pieces together, just gently rotate them. That's it. Now we'll just let it dry and we'll throw it on top of the Jeep in a few minutes. So uh, let's go over how we're going to secure the tarp to the inner pole. To attach the tarp to the inner pole, we're going to use three nylon straps. I took these off of an old sleeping bag that I'm not using anymore. And one of the things that you should do when you cut these straps to keep the ends from fraying is put a heat source, a lighter or a torch, to just uh, harden up the edges so they don't fray. So now those edges are hardened and they won't fray. And now I'm going to also use the heat source to penetrate the nylon to give me holes for the screw to go through. That will keep the nylon from tearing as well. So the end of that strap now is a hard plastic and so is the edge of the hole. So I just finished doing that to the other straps. Now that we've fabricated our straps, it's time to secure the tarp to the interior pole. What you should do is pilot hole, a hole three inches from the side here and then three inches from the side over there and then in the center to match up with the grommets on the tarp. Now the tarp is set up so that it can unroll from the tube and extend over the side of the Jeep but as we explained this is a rooftop awning it's going to be able to open up like this and expand over the back of the Jeep somewhat similar to a bat wing awning but because this also goes over the roof I call it the roof wing awning but because this piece of tarp has to be able to unfold we're only going to secure the grommets on the underside to the tube. So let's secure this grommet and the middle grommet and the grommet on the end, but not this top one or this top one. It's 
best to thread the screw past the holes and so that the strap is all the way up to the head of the screw. That way when you screw it into the pipe it doesn't get all bound up in the threads. Okay, this is the first one. Now the other thing I want to point out is that until we want to employ folding out the tart, we'll use a twist tie to hold the edge together all the way down the grommets on this side so that it'll help us keep that edge together when we wind the tarp into the tube. Aside for the latches, this is complete. We're just going to roll this up and throw it on top of the Jeep. So here's a teaser image of one of the ways to deploy the roof wing awning. We don't have time now to look at all the different ways that we could deploy this system, so we'll have to do it next week, so make sure that you subscribe and click that alert bell so that you won't miss it. But for now, let's look at the DIY cost of producing an awning system like this. A review of the list of materials and the total cost shows that we spent $131.85 to produce an awning system like this. In next week's episode, we'll look at the different ways that we can deploy this system and determine if it's worth it. Okay, let's have a look at this week's tips. Now for some cheaper, cheaper tips. I found a cheap source of tent poles are the 10 foot lengths of galvanized conduit pipe that you can pick up at the hardware store. And they only cost around eight bucks each. By using a grinder and tapering the head of a bolt, you could just tap it into the pole and what you have is a very inexpensive and functional tent pole. So let's now move on to some tips from our subscribers. And now for subscribers tips. Hey Jeeper Jeeper TV, I noticed your show last week on the awning concept. Often to keep awnings tight, I use a ratchet strap in place of a rope as it can easily make the awning tight as a drum. Signed, Guy Wire. Hey Guy, thanks for dropping us a line. Further to your tip, if you find that the wind is making your straps hum, just give them a twist and put a spiral pattern in the ratchet strap and that'll take care of it. You often see structures engineered for wind like that, like tall towers, or actually have a look at your stock Jeep Wrangler antenna and you'll see the same thing. Hey, so that's it for this week's Cheaper Jeeper TV episode where we looked at the construction and the cost of the roof wing awning. Come back next week and we'll discuss all the different ways it could be implemented and we'll do a checklist and see if it met our initial design intentions. If you like the video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe and share it with others if you like. So thank you very much for joining us. Stay well, be safe, take care.